It appears that there is a lack of emphasis on certain topics in today's churches. One such topic that is often avoided is the subject of demons and demonology. However, the truth remains that demons are undeniably real and have existed for ages. Their reality persists, and we must acknowledge that they want us to believe they are non-existent or mere myths. This allows them to continue their malevolent work against Christians. It is disheartening that despite reading about Jesus casting out demons in the Bible, some Christians still refuse to believe in their existence. Nowadays, if a preacher dares to speak about demons, they are quickly labeled as fearmongers. This is perplexing considering that Jesus himself preached about demons and demonic activity. The Bible addresses the subject of demons and their activities, and Jesus taught his disciples about them, as seen in Matthew chapter 12, verses 43 to 45. Jesus did not shy away from this topic, and neither should we. Throughout the Bible, we witness numerous accounts of Jesus confronting and casting out demonic spirits in various towns. Jesus did not ignore or deny the existence of demons, and neither should we. I would like to share a testimony about a young lady who used to attend my church in her journey to knowing the Lord. She grew up in a family that did not follow Jesus or any faith, but they held certain superstitious beliefs. As she entered adulthood, she became involved with a new group of friends who practiced various forms of idolatry and eastern spells. Her bond with this group deepened, and one night during a camping trip, her friends initiated a ritual. Although she felt uneasy, peer pressure led her to reluctantly participate. While they were gathered in the wilderness with a fire burning in the center, an unexpected event occurred. She suddenly found herself frozen in place, witnessing the arrival of individuals in hooded capes carrying fire lanterns. Their faces were obscured, and she was unable to move or look away. They chanted unfamiliar words, and she felt a presence entering her. At that time, she was unaware of its nature, but she now recognizes it as an unclean evil spirit. From that moment onward, she began experiencing recurring nightmares or visions. In these dreams, she would walk through a corridor at night, encountering shadowy figures extending from the walls, attempting to pull her inside. She would often wake up in different rooms of her house, realizing she had been sleepwalking. After enduring these struggles for years, she decided to seek help from a church. Miraculously, on the very day she accepted salvation, the nightmares and visions abruptly ceased. I share this story to highlight the fact that many individuals have genuine encounters with evil spirits. It is evident that there is a growing prevalence of demonic activity in our world, as more and more people come forward with reports of strange sightings. Even mainstream interest in paranormal phenomena and sightings is on the rise. Throughout my years in ministry and dealing with the realm of demonology, I have learned a valuable lesson. When facing demons, they despise Jesus but are afraid of abundant worship of him. Through singing songs, listening to sermons focused on him, and immersing yourself in Bible verses about him, you can combat demonic attacks. Instead of relying solely on human assistance, turn to Jesus, for it is in turning to him that demons will flee from your presence. I have known unbelievers who have struggled under demonic oppression and have gone to churches seeking help, only to be turned away out of fear. This should not be the case. We are witnessing numerous strange occurrences in this world, indicative of an ongoing battle between good and evil. Recently, I came across a sermon that focused on demons and demonology, and I would like to share with you what the minister revealed during that sermon. It was a profound moment that emphasized the close and tangible nature of the spiritual battle in our everyday lives. During the sermon, a doctor who worked in the emergency department shared his personal testimony. He spoke about how, whenever a patient arrived at the hospital, he would silently pray in his mind, seeking God's guidance to discern any underlying problems that may have been overlooked by the paramedics or other medical personnel. On a particular day, a young unconscious woman was rushed into the emergency room. As the doctor silently prayed for her in his mind, a deep voice emerged from within the woman and sternly commanded, stop praying for me. Shortly after that, the woman lost consciousness once again. Although the full understanding of what transpired in that moment may elude us, it is evident that the doctor's prayers created a hostile atmosphere for the spiritual realm. This account serves as a reminder that evil spirits are indeed real and actively engaged with our lives. The incident experienced by the doctor demonstrates the tangible nature of spiritual warfare. We must not underestimate the impact of our prayers and the authority we possess in Christ. 
Our prayers possess the ability to disrupt and challenge the forces of darkness, revealing their presence and exposing their intentions. As we navigate this world, we should remain vigilant and discerning. The reality of evil spirits should not be dismissed or taken lightly. Instead, we should equip ourselves with spiritual discernment, relying on the power of prayer and the authority granted to us by God through our faith and dependence on Him. We can actively participate in the spiritual battle by standing firm against the schemes of the enemy. Our prayers, even when silently uttered, have the ability to create an environment hostile to the enemy's work, ultimately contributing to the victory of light over darkness. If we truly believe that Jesus is our Lord and Savior, if we genuinely trust in the accuracy of the gospel records, how can we deny the reality of demons? There is an unmistakable devil and a formidable army of demons. We cannot effectively combat an enemy whose existence we refuse to acknowledge. The truth is that the devil and his demons do not overlook our existence. They know precisely who we are. As a preacher once said, I believe that when you come to know the Lord, you also come to know the devil. If someone claims they have never encountered the devil or had any experience with him, it raises questions about the depth of their relationship with the Lord. Contrary to popular belief perpetuated by the media, which portrays Satan and his army as residing in hell, the Bible informs us that the devil and his army roam this earth actively seeking whom they may devour. They are not confined to hellish places but operate in the heavenly realms. Demons not only manifest in obvious ways, but they can also be subtle and cunning. Consider the high rate of divorces, for instance. The problem does not solely lie with the individuals involved. There is opposition to marriage. The devil despises the sacred bond between a husband and wife and will exert all efforts to break it. I am not suggesting that all divorces occur solely due to the devil, as marriages involve the union of two flawed individuals, leading to challenges. However, I have witnessed the devil attacking marriages. Instead of arguing and fighting with your spouse, unite your strengths and identify if there is something attempting to wedge between your marriage. Remember that both of you are the same individuals who fell in love years ago. If joining forces seems impossible and your partner fails to perceive the threat, retreat to your corner and pray against it, fighting for your marriage. Now let's delve deeper into why demons target humans. The answer is simple. It is because we are created in God's image. Our very existence reflects the divine nature and the immense love that God has for us. This love is immeasurable and incomprehensible. Even after countless lifetimes of preaching about it, demons are well aware of this truth. Their primary concern is not directed towards you as an individual. They remain indifferent to you personally. Their focus is on Almighty God Himself, knowing that they cannot directly harm Him. Therefore, they aim their attacks towards us, the objects of God's affection. It is essential to understand that God's love for you surpasses His love for the world, regardless of its breathtaking beauty and magnificence. Even the resplendent stars adorning the night sky with all their celestial grandeur do not occupy a higher place in God's heart than you do. Humanity, in all its imperfections, represents the pinnacle of God's love. Yes, you, every individual, is the apex of God's love, the embodiment of His majestic affection. The ultimate aim of demons is to inflict pain and suffering upon God by oppressing and restraining His creation. However, the beautiful truth is that we do not have to succumb to their attacks. We do not have to be pushed around or live in constant fear. Through the authority bestowed upon us, we have the power to drive out the forces of darkness from our lives and homes. This authority is not unknown to the devil. He is fully aware of it. The question remains, are we aware of it as well? Understanding and embracing our God-given authority empowers us to stand against the schemes of the enemy. We can resist the devil and his attempts to undermine our faith and hinder our lives. It is through a genuine realization of our authority in Christ that we can confidently confront and overcome the attacks of the enemy. No longer do we need to be passive recipients of the enemy's torment. We have the ability to take action and exercise our authority in Christ to combat the forces of evil. By leaning on the power of Jesus and operating in his name, we can confront the devil and drive him out of our lives. The devil's strategy is to instill fear and intimidation, but we possess the assurance and confidence that comes from knowing who we are in Christ. We are no longer victims but conquerors, empowered by the Holy Spirit to triumph over the forces of darkness. 
Let us embrace our authority in Christ and boldly proclaim his victory in our lives, confidently facing every attack with the knowledge that we have the power to overcome. In conclusion, the reality of demons and their activities cannot be ignored or dismissed. They are undeniably real and have existed for ages. Jesus himself preached about demons and their presence in the world. Throughout the Bible, we witness numerous accounts of Jesus confronting and casting out demonic spirits. As believers, we must recognize the existence of demons and actively engage in spiritual warfare. We should not shy away from discussing topics such as demons and demonology in our churches. Instead, we should equip ourselves with knowledge, spiritual discernment, and the power of prayer. By relying on Jesus and understanding our authority in Him, we can combat the forces of darkness and experience victory in our lives. Let us remember that our faith in Jesus and our reliance on Him make us a formidable force against the schemes of the enemy. With Jesus as our guide and protector, we can face any spiritual battle with confidence and emerge victorious. So, let us stand firm in our faith, unafraid to confront the reality of demons, and continue to walk in the light and love of our Lord.